Hey all, welcome to the studio. I'm Stephanie. This is Deliberately Creative. We're going to be doing some tips and tricks with the ink tents blocks. First tip, go through and give yourself a swatch card. My husband did this swatch card for me and these are all of the colors. They're not exactly in order anymore because I've moved them around. Move them around the way you want. I should go ahead and do another swatch card with them in the order, but I'm not sure this is the order I want them to be. Second tip, there's wells in here. You can use this as a palette to make colors. I, I mixed a black and purple over here. I've got a couple orangey yellows over here. And you can use them just like watercolor. You can even just get your brush wet and pick up color straight off of the stick. That's one of the ways I really like to use these. You can draw with them. Don't worry about breaking them. If they get broken, they're still usable. I want to draw some inspiration from this little collage that I made uh, last week. I found this really cute butterfly. This butterfly looks like it was already collaged. There's some lilacs, lilac leaves, I like the color palette, so I want to draw some inspiration from this and maybe draw a quick little collage. This is the Hanamule watercolor, mold made, um, surface size, cold press, 100% cotton, 300 grams, 140 pounds. I'm not going to be too worried about erasing things right now. I don't have my eraser handy, so I'm just going to quickly sketch just some general areas. I know that I'm going to have some of the lilacs, so I want to get this nice bundle of lilacs right here. I just loosely, almost like a pine cone shape, just getting my general area. This is a butterfly, so it's symmetrical-ish. It doesn't have to be perfect. Sketch in my general shape. So there's kind of this fuzzy bit where the body is. I know that there's a head, even though they don't have the head on there. And then I'm going to go, I, I wanted this just to give me the general shape of the butterfly. I don't have to make it perfect, but I do want it to be fairly symmetrical. So nice thing about going in with a pencil, it just gives me the ability to to refine just a little bit but I'm not you notice I'm not erasing and I'm not going to erase before I do my watercolor if you don't like the pencil lines underneath then erase but I kind of like that that pathway through that pathway through the artwork you can see where the artist walked. Now, I don't want to take that down all the way to the edge of the paper. So it's not going to be perfectly symmetrical. And this is going to be a watery, washy type painting. Actually, I think I'm going to take those little, I'm not going to do those little extra bumpity out bits. And that, Maybe a maybe a couple of the leaves that were on that, and maybe I'll even go a little bit higher up with my purple and stick a leaf out up here. Since I have one butterfly and one flower thingy, I'm going to put like three leaves on. You know, just do it whatever you want, however you want, and make it look like you want. I am going to get this all wet. This is the number 12 Mimic round. I want to get all the background kind of splashed in. Next tip up on the ink tents blocks is that going in and using them for your background, once you've got your color down, 
it's going to stay. It's not going to lift and move once it's dried. So if you want your paper to have that lovely washy type of look, you need to get a lot of water on your paper. Let it soak in. You don't want puddles. And I'm going to go in and do kind of a periwinkle lavendery blue. What I think I'm going to do is just use my brush right on here and just start dropping that pretty blue. And I'm not going to worry about it going over. I'm keeping it soft. This is an ink, but you can use it like a watercolor. You can get variations in your tone. You can get it to, look at that, it whooshes. It does whoosh out. And I like my background to come in and be sort of over the edges of things. This is a soft, very springy collage. I went to a class and just enjoyed being with other people for the first time in years. Now I see that there's this really pretty kind of green in here and there's that lavender from the lilacs. I'm going to go for that lilac-y purple and just drop a bit of that in here. I'm just going to touch it up here. Oh, that's that's lovely. That is a perfect purple color for me to use. This is the 36 set of the Ink Tense blocks. I am using them like a palette of of watercolor. And that is one of the ways to use Ink Tense blocks. Use it like a palette. I can go back in as it dries and put some a few detail ones in but you know what i kind of like it i think i'm going to put a little bit of that purple there a little bit over here as your paper dries out your pretty little lilac dots are not going to spread so you want to do this part when the when the paper is wet by doing it when the paper is wet it spreads out, it blossoms into flowers. You can do a little bit of shading by just picking up and not having as much water. Look at that. So I want some of those dots to be a little bit more joined together. I don't want it to be quite such a butterfly bush. I do want it to have that feeling of lilacs. So to do that, I'm just taking the color that's already there and smudgling it around. Once it's dry, you won't be able to do that. You won't be able to blend them. There. Ah, so pretty. Got these green leaves on here. I want to go ahead and get some base color of green. Ooh, that's a nice green. You notice I haven't let anything dry yet. I'm putting the green down the center. I'm not worried if it blurs out a little bit. I'm not worried that I got purple on my green leaf from before. I can refine afterwards. After it's dry, I can go in and I can refine. So don't, don't fuss too much. Right now, just get it on here. Get some color down. So this paper does buckle as you're using it. It will dry flat. Just leave it attached to its block or have it taped down to another board if you wanted to work smaller. So I took this sort of turquoise blue that's on there and I am going to just get a base, 
of color on my butterfly. I'm not going to put it in perfectly. I'm going to leave some areas sort of high and low. Oh, I like that color. I do like to put ink. I am a mixed media person at heart, I guess. I've always loved doing ink and watercolor. This is right in my comfort, comfort zone. So I can go back in and I can put details on with ink if I want, but you know, sometimes you can get it perfect the way you want it first time with the colors. I want a little bit of green or a little bit of, actually a little bit of yellow in that. That's a little bright, mix it together. I'm mixing on the paper. I like that. And I'm not worried about it being perfect. Going outside the lines, no big deal. Letting it just dry. Let the watercolor fairies do their thing. I'm mixing a little bit of that yellow and that green, that, that uh, turquoise together. Down here in my, just a corner of this palette. That was a little too green. I need more blue. Ooh, that's gonna be interesting. I like that. That's interesting. Now, I did not erase those little tail tail extensions. <laughs> I did not erase those, did I? I'm not worried about it. Again, they're just going to end up in the background of it. They're going to end up just being texture in the painting. This is a quick painting sketch. It's not necessarily going to be a, a beautiful finished piece of art. This is tips and tricks with with ink tents, and I'm just giving you my tips and tricks as I go. Ooh, I love how this just sort of took its little, took a little walk. I'm gonna let that dry and I'll be right back. All right, so now we've got the lilacs, the leaves, the background, the butterfly, I love these little sparkles of white in the in the butterfly wings. I'm gonna try and keep them. I don't know. Something that I do enjoy on this is I like this sort of dark edging just on the just on the edges. And it's kind of a reddish brownish color. So there's this sort of edging along the butterfly wings and there's darker tones in the lilacs. Grab a darker purple. Let's just test that up here. Ooh. Yep, that's a much darker purple. I am not gonna wet the paper. I am going to go in. And kind of put some spots of this darker darker tone I'm keeping it darker down towards closer to the butterfly because that's going to keep the butterfly popping forward and once this is dry these will be dry the way they are they're not going to they're not going to move. So if you're a little bit hesitant, water your, water your darker color down a little bit. See, I'm just, I'm still using that first touch. 
of that ink and I'm just working it around now and while it's still wet you can pick it up and use it like a palette right off the painting and you can do the same things with blocks and with pencils or with the intense pans I do have the intense pans but I like my blocks also let's see maybe I see if I can pick some of it up off there And just like watercolor, this, when you put a lot of water in it, it does, it does soften. It does fade a bit. Be random, be loose. This is not a, this isn't a scientific drawing of a butterfly and a lilac. I just picked up a, some strong, strong purple straight off of that stick with a slightly damp brush. It's not totally wet anymore. It's just a little bit damp. So this is going to... Oh yeah. See that right there? Contrast. Contrast. Contrast lets you know where something starts and something stops. I'm gonna come over here with a very just barely wet brush did not even dip it in to my water it's just the dampness of the brush can pick up that touch of pigment I'm gonna put a little bit of that color and I'm just touching it in ever so slightly it's kind of a reddish brown just a few little dash marks it's all it takes and now while it's still damp on the paper you can soften and move a little bit of that color around without filling the whole thing in. Oh, that is so cool. Let's zoom in on that. See? Just a touch. Now, I've not gone back and picked up any more of that color. I'm not going to for this part. Now, I may... Okay, I'm going to go back in and pick up a little bit of that brown again. I'm going to put just the tiniest little line of it. Along that edge. A little bit. Along this edge. Ooh. And a little bit along this bottom edge. I'm letting the line break. I'm not worried about making it a perfect line. Now let's see what I can do on the other side, eh? There. A little bit of it. I didn't go back and get any more oh that's looking good I just wanted something to I do need a little touch more there tiny touch oh pretty very very pretty tiny little edge doesn't does not need a big hard outline but a little a little outline on it wow if you don't have the if you've got intense blocks and you don't have the intense palette is that you can break these and put little you know a little section 
of the colors you like to use into the little half pans of a palette box. I'm going to go ahead and grab I think this kind of mossy yellow green sort of a goldy yellow green that's pretty I am going to add some water to it and get a little bit deeper little bit more detail not going to be totally perfect and finished on that I'm going to just get this a little bit crisper I know it looks a little bright on the screen but it's not in real life this is not that bright And this is sort of a mossy, a mossy green. And I just want to get a bit of a base layer going here. And I'm having to think about my shadows, where these shadows are, what these shadows look like. Um, because this is a collage, I didn't do the, you know, everything is just cutouts and I'm trying to make it work together. So we're basically doing the butterfly, the lilacs, and some leaves. And that's a way to pull inspiration from you know, other things out in the world. You don't have, <laughs> you're not limited to what's actually there. All the elements are there though which gave me the starting place where I'm starting from. I'm starting to refine some of my edges. You see, they're not blurring out anymore. Let's see. What's that color? Ooh, that's a, that's a much darker kind of greenish tone. Now where I've put the, that yellowy green, that mossy green before the paper is a little bit wet. So I can go in with this other, this other color and it will blur out a little bit. It won't look as harsh. because the paper's wet. Underneath of that pet, that, that wing, and under this edge here. The lilacs have bright, really strong green leaves. So I will be taking a bit of this brighter green, fresh, spring, and we'll start working it in, I think. Neat thing here, you can glaze, you can't, when you do it over dry areas, you can do your wet into wet. So if you hear stuff in the background, like loud airplanes, <laughs> I do live fairly close to an international airport that does have a, there is a, what is it? National Guard air station that they do yeah like that uh, that they do 
run flights out to the National Guard runs flights out to the coast. So they do turnaround flights. And I seem to be under their flight pattern right now. I don't recognize or don't recognize. I don't I don't remember always being under the flight pattern, but you know. That's what it is right now. They change their flight patterns. Now I can get, I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit too tied into the, into the details here and I'm starting to lose that soft freshness that I was really enjoying. So I think that it's time to stop playing with the, so I grabbed the tissue. And yes, you can lift when the ink tense is wet. So once it's dry, you can't, you can't wet it and lift out again. But this edge right here is too harsh. So I'm going to soften it and lift out just a little bit. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better. There. I just don't want that to be quite set, quite such a harsh line. I want it to be a little softer. I want it to look like it's coming out from behind those flowers. That's pretty. Okay. Put a little bit of that green down here. From behind that, that wing, but blurred out as it comes out away from the wing. There we go. That same little brown, I'm gonna do the, little decoration spots. little bit of a shadow bit right in there with some turquoisey blue just to give it a touch of a shadow so I am going to take a dry intense this is that dark, dark purple. I'm gonna push just some spots of it. Just with the dry block, using it kind of like a pencil, but it, because it's a block, it's not going to be as controlled If you don't get it wet though, you are going to have to frame this underneath of glass with a mat to keep it from uh, getting moisture. I think I will take and just touch 
I'm just going to touch it with a slightly damp brush to activate it so that it's not not going to reactivate at a inopportune time. But what I want to do is just get it wet in those locations where where it is. If you leave it unactivated, it's going to possibly get moisture and reactivate when you don't want it. If you did this and you sold the painting and then they had a bit of moisture, it might bleed out funny. So I'm not, I'm not mushing the paint around or the ink around. I am just tapping it, just carefully tapping it with the brush. So you see where it's really dry right here. I'm just tapping it with the brush and I'm not trying to move the pigment around. I'm just trying to activate it so that it's not going to reactivate when I don't want it to. Put it right down here. Don't really want to do too much. I'm not going to do too much. I just want a little bit of separation, not a harsh outline. I think that's good. If that's, that might be my one biggest tip, the one biggest tip, and you, this goes for all materials. Use the paper that you're going to do the artwork on as the material that you swatch or that you test. So by testing up here, I was able to see how the color reacted on this paper. Thank you so much for being here. I hope this will inspire you to pull out some materials that you haven't used for a while and go play. Do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Oh, and if you haven't already subscribed, click that subscribe button and share this video with your friends. We'll see you soon. Bye.